This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck, and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Hey, Pocket Watchers, welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I know it's been a few weeks, the Pocket Watcher has been busy. I am certified financial planner, Jason Thornton. That means I am a real financial advisor. I've been busy at work because I specialize in tax and wealth planning for my clients. But on YouTube, on YouTube, I react to your money questions and scammer news. Got to give a big shout out to the over 118,000 of you who support the content. I appreciate that. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, share this content. If you have not subscribed already, I right, will sit back, relax. You might see something that you like. Now, let's get straight into it. I do want to make a couple announcements. So here we go. We have a new channel. All right, now listen, I, I want to be clear. When I started pocket watching with JT about two and a half years ago, uh, you know, the channel was really focused on uh reactions to people who give bad financial advice, reaction to scammers and stuff like that. I get it. Over 118,000 of you click that subscribe button because you want to watch me, an actual financial advisor, react to different money stories centered in the African-American community. I got it. I got it. But I also like to do straight call-in shows where people call in for financial tips. I enjoy that. I can't talk about scammers all the time. All right, let's let's just keep it real. I cannot talk about scammers every single time I come on the internet. So I decided to start a second channel. This second channel is for you guys to call in and we'll have a chat about what's going on in your financial life. And I'll do the best I can to give you recommendations on how I think you can improve your financial situation. Now, let me be clear. If you do not like that type of content, do not subscribe. Don't subscribe to this channel if you just want to hear me talk about scammers because we're still going to do that right here on the main channel. The second channel is just for maybe a weekly show, about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I'll give you guys the link. You click the link. You let me know what's going on in your financial life and I'll try to help. All right? That's what we're doing this is the new channel right here. You can hit the link in the uh, description of this video and you can subscribe to the new channel. All right, tonight, tonight we have a special guest, all right? Have a special guest, a former trustee of the city of Dalton who's going to give us his opinion of what's been going on with the super mayor, right? What's been going on with the super mayor? And before I even talk about that, got to give a big shout out to Pink Book Lessons. They have been doing an amazing job covering this story. I mean, 90% of what I know about this story comes from this YouTube channel. Make sure you sub uh, subscribe and support Pink Book Lessons, all right? All right, so we have, we have our guest here, and I want to bring him up because there's a lot going on in the city of Dalton. Before I bring them up, though, let me give you a refresher of some of the newest madness that has been going on in the city of Dalton. Accused of questionable spending amid concern that the village's bills are not being paid. The latest developments, Dalton's police cars may be repossessed because of some outstanding loans. Political reporter Marianne Ahern here now with the very latest for us. Marianne. Alex and Marianne, good afternoon. Yes, Mayor Tiffany Henyard, she has has dismissed the questions rather for months now on how she has spent taxpayer dollars. But adding to the city's troubles, the former police chief is suing the village, saying he was wrongfully terminated. 
I am your leader. At the most recent Dalton Village board meeting, Mayor Tiffany Henyard berated several members on the Board of Trustees. It's been a months long battle with various news agencies exposing how Henyard has spent thousands on travel and restaurants while the city's bills are not paid. I have done a waterman job for the city of Dalton. It's been over four months and I haven't got paid. He's not the only one. Now there's concern six police cars will be repossessed because the city loans have not been paid. Another six cars from the Public Works Department have overdue loans too. Jason Howes is a village trustee. I've received no less than 10 messages from different vendors um, every time I, I turn them over to the mayor's office and it goes on, it, it really falls on deaf ears. Other trustees are worried as well about Dalton's finances. We don't even know how much money is in the bank account at the moment. When we, when the last time they shared the information, a few months ago, we were $7 million in debt. It is on the back of the mayor. We are the legislative body. She wants us to do our job because she's saying we don't never do our job. Our job is to make sure that the finances is in order and um, she's not allowing us to do our job. The town has paid for billboards to promote the mayor who actually holds two political posts, making close to 300000 a year. She's also the Thornton Township Supervisor. The town has hired a public relations firm to handle questions during this crisis. Public relations will get paid, a trip to first class flights to New York and to Las Vegas get paid. Uh, but when it comes to things that the town really needs, uh, we're left in the dark and getting people that calling and, and getting no response. We, of course, reached out to the Dalton mayor's team. They asked us to send them our questions ahead of time. They have not replied. Published reports say the attorney general has ordered the mayor to release her spending records. We are waiting. And, of course, all right, it's, it's getting a little rough, so let me make sure I let you know who we have on the phone line. We have one of the former trustees of the township, so let me uh, bring him up. Edward, Edward, what's hey, going on, my brother? What's up, what's up, brother? How you feeling? Listen, I, I want to say thank you for, for joining Pocket Watching with JT. You are a person who is actually running the YouTube channel which is the Dalton trustees getting out the information to the yeah. open public of what is going on. Well, as much as you can, because the information yeah. is limited, but what's going on with the city of Dalton. Can you introduce yourself to the audience and let us know your perspective of how the super mayor is running the city? Uh, um, I, um, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm not. I don't run it by myself. There's a group of us that run. It's a group of us that run the, the social media and the, uh, the the our communications. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, uh, I am a former trustee. Uh, it is a, a, a lot going on in Dalton, as you see. Um, mm -hmm. I subscribe. I urge people to subscribe to our YouTube channel um, because we present the actual truth. And we present facts, and we don't present you know no high power, no fluff. We try to present actual facts and we don't we because the mayor prides herself on misinformation and lies and that's how she kind of misleads people she's a passionate liar so uh if you ever watch our board meetings she'll say a whole bunch of stuff like the last if you watch the last board meeting they just the, the police chief said this stuff is handled and it wasn't handled they didn't pay the bills and I, as you can see, according to the news report, she was in Vegas when the board voted to pay for the, the police cars. Mm -hmm. But that's just the, the style of leadership they had, which is which is really uh, bankrupting our town and putting us in a hell of a position. I want to say, first of all, I, I didn't say thank you for having me on. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been uh, watching JT Pocket Watcher. Uh, I guess I think I got up on it when the Jay Morrison stuff was going on. I kind of started listening, watching your, your channel. Uh, but yeah, that's the, that's that's the concern of what's going on in the village of Dalton, and it's um, uh, it's the we're we're it's pretty. How can I say it? It's a dictatorship, and she's intentionally hiding she's her spending. She's intentionally hiding her spending, and that's what makes it hard. That's what really makes it hard for the for the uh, for the council to do their job because they're hired, not hired, they're elected, right, to oversee the money. And you know about that, right? As far as and, the board. And when, when you were on uh, the board of trustees, weren't you a part of the finance committee when you were? I was, uh, I, was, I was part of the finance committee. And that's when Jason House, as you look at our interview that we did on a YouTube page, that's his mm -hmm. expertise. 
So we would get we would get monthly reports and we would see what's going on. He would break it down. I sat down with Jace when I first got elected. He because to read a budget and to read the a budget, it's 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 not rocket science, but he knows how right. to read it. So I sat down here one day and he was telling me, okay, we get this money, we get this money. That's why he was over the committee. Okay, mm-hmm. you read this right here. You look at this right here. That's why he was over the committee. I, I have expertise is in communication, videography, photography. So right. I was over the communication part of the village before I became a trustee. Um, so that's my expertise. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if, if you're running with people, you want somebody over the finances who's going to know what's going on and do this. And then you have a budget. And you got to stick to the budget. And if you don't stick to the budget, you have what you have now. You right. Have you you end up with overspending. The budget is overspending. basically letting you know how much revenue is coming in. You can clearly identify the most necessary expenses that are going out so that you don't overspend. Now, yes. you've been a part of the uh, Dalton area government prior to the super mayor, Tiffany, before yes. she got in to office. So how can you yes. describe the difference between her administration and their openness with finances in the prior one? Well, the last the last administration... He they prided themselves. He was he inherited a real in 2013 when the previous mayor took over. The finances were pretty bad, no audits, uh, and then he kind of got that stuff in shape. He didn't do everything right, but he they always had financial audits every 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 year, and everything was open. They had financial mm-hmm. when they did the budget. When well, when I was a department head from a trustee, you had to present your budget to the trustees, and it was open in a public forum. And every budget meeting, they would have a like when Jason got on, he was over the finances, so he would have an open, he would have an open meeting. Residents can come in to look at them, but they would take sometimes two, three hours, and everybody have the budget in their hand. What's this? What's that? What's that? That's the way you do city government. It's, tra- it's telling with taxpayers' money. And so since when when this administration took over, the first year when we had the first village administrator, they was tr- she was trying to. Present the first year she got in, they sat down with everybody and we went through the budget, this and that. We looked at certain things. Now, keep in mind, when she took over, that was right after COVID. You know, COVID, I was I was on the board when, when COVID hit. Mm-hmm. Every city government got real, 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 not say, lack of a better word, stingy, but they constricted because they never know, they didn't know how things were going to react right. with COVID. So they got real conservative in their spending. Um, and so when they got real conservative in their spending, when she took over, she had a nice surplus, a decent amount of money. Okay. Uh, and so she was able, she inherited, uh, uh, it wasn't perfect, but there was a surplus, a small surplus. Mm-hmm. But she butchered that. She butchered that. And, and what happened was she started, it, it became to a point where, it, with the first two meetings, it was smooth. First two meetings when she took over, it was smooth. Mm-hmm. It was, we gonna work together. Good governments, good governments, city governments, before board meeting, you get all your votes right out. out. They, you know the votes going to the board meeting. You don't get right. spring nothing on them. So they, you, good, good mayors, they talk to their council before the board meeting. Right. And so when they, when they get to the council, they know the votes. So the first mm-hmm. two meetings, it was smooth. Third meeting, it turned into put 25 things on the agenda, A through Z. Oh, uh-huh. y'all don't want to pass it. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Do your job. Then they start. Then it turns into a verbal abuse. Y'all is braiding us, talking to us. That y'all, it was, it was, it was, it was terrible, and it was, it was hard because she was so adamant. If you look at some of her videos with how she was as a trustee, she always said, "You got to run this through your board, man. You got to work right. with your board, man. You got to work with your board." So after she got in, that was it. That was that was it. after the first last two meetings. It was over. At all right. And now, I remember going, watching an interview where they said that the last time they had an opportunity to look at the books, because the books ended yeah. up getting closed to yeah. the board. But the last yeah. time that they looked, there was a number floating around said that there was a seven million dollar deficit. Is yeah. that accurate or is someone putting yeah. out? Yeah, no, no, that's not, that's not that's not that's on our YouTube channel. Okay. If we put anything on a YouTube channel, I verify that because you lose credibility if you put stuff up there that's not true. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely true. And they haven't seen the books or the credit card statements since May. Mm. So right now, the attorney general is telling her she has to turn over the credit card statements that she hasn't turned over uh, uh, because she just has it. Because remember, you see the video about the $150,000 truck. Right. Once that came out, then the trustees got restricted by what they can see. Okay. Um, but, and, so, 
for, for, for those people who are unaware, they, they, they haven't followed this story. Somehow, some way, the mayor got approved a Tahoe truck that was like $150,000. We actually have a copy of that check. And we're told that there's supposed to be two signatures on that check for it to actually go through. But there's only one signature, and that was a signature of the mayor. Is that accurate? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and that's that's and that's why she brought it up. Uh, she brought mm -hmm. it up. That's just two different stories, but it's it's semi accurate. But and I, you know, it's this is this it's unfortunate because I didn't I didn't run what I was when she went for when she won for mayor. I was already in office, mm -hmm. so I didn't support her in the first election. I supported mm -hmm. the previous mayor, but he had a stroke thirty days before the election. Right. You know what I mean? So and I want to clear something up. Mm -hmm. 82 percent she keeps you ever know she said i won by 82 percent right 82 percent of the vote that is so misleading and let me tell you why because people think well she won by 82 percent of the vote the people must love her that's so misleading let me tell you why in dalton you have a primary and a general mm -hmm. a primary election and a general election this is a democratic area if you went in, if you went in the Democratic primary, you got it. The last mayor ran in the Democratic and won, and he won unopposed in the general. So he could say, "I won about hundred percent." hundred percent. And, I, and I, I ran unopposed. <laughs> he could say that, and it would be true, but it's misleading. It's not the true characteristic of what happened. The true characteristic of the vote is that she ran in the primary, and she only won that vote by I maybe maybe by hundred votes. And the last mm -hmm. mayor had a, a stroke. So, and what gave her credibility was Jason House. Because Jason House got the most votes out of anybody on that whole that whole election. But he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't ready to run for mayor yet. So he only won by May a small percentage. And keep in mind that there was it was a thousand less, almost a thousand less votes. I can get the actual numbers, a thousand less votes less in the previous election versus the her election. So that's misleading when she says 82% of the vote. I'm going to do a video on the 82% because it's the 82% lie. Because people, they say it over and over. I'm like, 82%? That's so misleading. Right. Like I said, I can, when, I run, when I run, I won I won by maybe 200 votes from when I won. Right. And in general, I run unopposed. And I right. got 100% so of the vote. So, so it's 100%. After you get through the primary, it's almost primary. 100%. Now, and, there's and, an and issue right, going right. on with the former uh, police chief. I want to show a video, and then I want to get your reaction. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. The street uh, fighting crime, and instead we have several officers that are uh, riding around protecting the mayor. The former police chief in South Suburban Dalton is speaking out for the first time to just one station about Mayor Tiffany Henyard's controversial police security detail and how it impacted his ability to fight crime. Last year, a Fox 32 investigation showed how that detail is taking officers off the street and costing taxpayers thousands of dollars in overtime. Dane Placco continues his investigation exclusively talking to the former top cop who tried to put a stop to it. The manpower was just very stressed and critical to the point of almost breaking. Former Dalton Police Chief Robert Collins spoke to us from Florida where he's taken a new job after being fired by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard late last year. But Collins says he remains frustrated by what he experienced leading an undermanned, overworked police department while Mayor Henyard demanded a large personal security detail. You know, wrong is wrong and there's a time to hold people responsible and accountable for their actions. Last year, a Fox 32 investigation followed Henyard's detail as Dalton police officers drove her from morning till night, often to her second taxpayer-funded job as Thornton Township Supervisor in South Holland. Through an open records request, we found the officers assigned to Henyard racking up hundreds of hours of overtime, costing taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars. But at some point, there would be two officers or three officers. And depending on if there was some type of event, it would be more officers. That's for a town of a little more than 20,000 people that's struggling economically and usually only has a few officers on duty per shift. Collins says Henyard security detail was warranted when it started in 2021 after a police-involved shooting sparked protests and threats. And at some point, the protests stopped. However, the detail continued. 
and it grew in size and scope. Collins says Hanyard frequently uses the officers as her personal valets. Officers would be sent out to run errands to do pickups. And, and the mayor's detail racked up thousands of dollars in travel expenses, accompanying Hanyard on her many trips out of town. Why do you need a security detail while you're out of town? Um, who's on the other end of that flight? that's going to do harm. Collins says he became increasingly frustrated because the mayor's detail tied his hands when it came to fighting crime. Just last week, a mass shooting on Sibley Boulevard left four people injured. Collins believes the bad guys know there aren't enough cops on Dalton streets. But Village of Dalton has its challenges with gangs, guns, and drugs. And if those officers aren't there, the visibility isn't there. And if the visibility isn't there, then uh, criminals have free reign. When we tried to ask Mayor Henyard about her use of the detail last year, we were stopped by Village Administrator Keith Freeman. Let's Mayor, see. mind if I ask you a couple questions about your security detail? Absolutely not. I'm asking her. Yeah, she says no. Collins says he got the same cold shoulder when he tried to tell Freeman about the problems the mayor's detail was creating. And, and it, it more or less was, these are the orders. This is what you have to do. Last week, Collins filed a civil lawsuit against the village of Dalton for wrongful termination, saying he was fired by the mayor without cause and without board approval because his wife is friends with some of the mayor's perceived political enemies. And uh, our contention is that it is illegal. Did he do anything wrong? No. Chief Collins, any position that he's ever been in is a policeman's policeman. He held the rank of chief but he's a patrolman at heart. But it is frustrating to see the officers used like that. I'm sure the officers are frustrated too, but they follow the orders. In Dalton, Dane Placco, Fox 32, Chicago. All right, so so Edward, did you know uh, the chief? Was uh, the chief a person that you knew? And you know, what do you think about his position in the city? Yeah, he was he was a stand-up guy. Stand up guy. He tried. He, he was. Uh, I, I, I can say, he was her last level of credibility. Um, uh, by her getting rid of him, it's, that was a that was a huge mistake on her part. But you know what I mean. And he, he and the the security detail was too much. It was too much. He he characterized it right there. At one point, it was justified, but then it got too much. Then they become gophers and getting food. And it's too much. And stress is a small town, so. You get three, four officers. They need to be on the streets. They need to be on the streets. That's that's. There's no without about. It. So this last meeting, they talked about they're cutting the budget. They cut. The, if you listen to the meeting, Jason broke down. Mm -hmm. Every year was an average of six hundred thousand dollars in overtime. This last year went up to one point six, one of a million dollars. So, so it's 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 um, it's disappointing. But you right. got to continue to push the narrative. Because we got a strong group of uh, people, like the trustees, they're up there now, still right. helping them out. They're they're fighting, and we're, everybody's close. And everybody's in this in this fight together to save our town, save our village. Because this the law, it's 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 how can I say it? It's just scratching the surface of the stuff that's going on. But when you have a person who is bent off power and gone off power, and I have to prove that I'm the greatest in mm -hmm. a narcissist personality. It's, it's, it's reckless. And then people, it's hell to pay if you go against it. If you, if you, if you, if you go against it, it's, it's hell, it's hell to pay. So that's where we're at right now, man. All right, so before you go, what can the audience do to support? I want them to go to your YouTube channel, to yep. the uh, Dalton Trustee YouTube channel. I yep. want them to link yep. in with that, but what more can they do? Please go to our Dalton Trustee YouTube page, our Dalton Trustee Facebook page, Pretty soon we'll have a website up there. We're going to continue to put the truth out there and the good things that we're doing. We have our monthly meeting called Tea with the Trustees. We're trying to connect with as many residents as possible because it's going to take a lot to, uh, to, to get her out of office. And we're going to work hard to get to do it. But at the same time, I want also, we are, Dalton is not as poor as they say. That $29,000, $26,000. The median income is about $50,000. There's some, there's some, I can, I can. I need to do a video on some strong neighborhoods and don't. We're not as poor as the news media makes us out to be. Uh, but and, and I'm it, sure the mayor overspending the city budget is oh, not. Yeah, that, oh, not that doesn't help at all. It doesn't help at all. It doesn't help at all. You know what I mean? Because you don't know what's going on with the with the finances. So whoever 
God blesses whenever the, uh, this administration, the next administration takes over, you it's and you never know what you're going to inherit. You know what I mean? Because sometimes she she keeps up. You know, like you ever see a poor person will have a, a six six a, you know a hundred thousand dollar bins outside, but they in foreclosure. You don't right. know that they're broke, but you they look nice. They look oh you got a nice bins. That's she keeps up the facade. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. And the same time, she's bankrupting the town. You can't pay the the police cars. You can't pay for the police cars that's right. been voted on. And every month, they put more stuff on the agenda. And then they say, "Well, yeah, I gotta pay these vendors. Pay these vendors. The trustees are doing their job. They gotta hold them. They they can't just give pay this, pay that, pay this, right? Because they run out of money. And that's and it, at right now. And right if now, the you trustees. It, it, if the trustees have to approve payments. Why yeah. do they not have access to know what the balance of the yeah. bank account That's, or the balance of the credit card is? Here's what she does. Here's what she does. She says they do have it. They're lying. They do have it. I mean, you look, residents, I'm trying to get this concrete done. Don't y'all want this concrete done? And they stopping it. And we like, we don't have it. So the residents are like, well, who do I believe? I mm -hmm. think this last situation, not being a police, it really shows they don't have it. They don't have it. And they haven't been giving it over. And then the news media, the, the uh, lawyer said it right. They approved these payments. And trustee house said it right. They're, they're saying this hasn't, all these vendors are reaching out to the trustees like, I'm not getting paid, I'm not getting paid. Right. So so it's that's, what, that's what's happening. Because what she'll do, watch her board, man. she'll say they do have it. They need to pay for this. Y'all y'all got, these vendors did the work. We did a whole, I did a whole video on that where the, the some of the uh, grant money they did some streets and they still owe these people three hundred some thousand dollars. But they saying pay the people, pay the people. She gets the work done and then peel, presents the trust, presents the trustees with the uh, with the bill. Right. After they get you done. And they like, we didn't even know this was happening. So that's where we at, man. All right. Well, listen, man, thank oh, you so also, much. Also, like I said, they can go to the Dalton Trustees doc, or they can go to Dalton Trustees YouTube page, right? Facebook page. We're gonna continue to do videos. I'm going to continue to do interviews with the trustees to hear everybody's sad because the trustees, all of them moved, live out there, been out there for years, homeowners, parents, uh, mothers, it's just, it's just they're great people. So people need to see that. And that's what we're going to continue to work to do. All right, my brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Y'all make sure you go and uh, support. Go to the YouTube channel, uh, the Dalton Trustees. All right. At this time, listen, I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear from y'all. What what what's going on? What do you think should happen to a person that is elected into office, but they are overstepping their bounds? It's to the point where it looks as if she could bankrupt a city. She could bankrupt a city. They said it was almost a seven million dollar deficit. So I want to hear from you guys. There is a link in the chat. You hit that link in the chat. And you can call into the show. I want to hear from you. There's a few people back here already, so I'm going to bring you up. I've got uh, Mr. G. You are first in line. So, Mr. G, let me bring you up here. We go. Mr. G, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for calling. Man, you know, uh, before I, I ask my question, I said, man, it's tax season. I'm, I'm sorry because I ain't going to hear from my dude JT in a while. <laughs> I, I, it's bittersweet because I, I know you, you. It brings the business in for you, but I'm sorry because then I don't get to hear from you as often. So, you know, it's like getting the tea, you know, or you know that fix or whatever. I'm like, man, where's JT at? But I need it. Man, where he at? <laughs> and, but, and the crazy thing is, there's so many stories that y'all keep hitting me with in my email, and it's like <laughs> I want to cover these things, but I'm not a full time YouTuber, people. I, I know. Got, I got to you, but trust me. When tax season is over, I'm gonna start cranking these videos out. Well, yes, sir. So, uh, I get. I guess you know, it's it's a lot of ways that could go with this. You know, she made mm -hmm. Kwame Kilpatrick look like a saint, like an angel. You know what I'm saying? C compared to 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 what she's doing, I'm I'm just, I guess, because I, I don't want to see anybody go to prison. You know what I'm saying? Right. But then it's like you got to answer for what you did, and. So it's like, when are the cuffs coming? When is the DOJ going to come and investigate or announce that they're investigating? You know, like, I'm in Georgia, so, you know, we got the GBI. So, you know, the equivalent to Illinois, is they going to do anything? 
Um, you know, mm-hmm. so how can we as citizens, you know, or, or I'm not even a citizen there, but I'm a U.S. citizen. So how can right. we uh, bring this to attention? I'm pretty sure they know, but how can we t- kind of gas like to say, hey, man, like this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? What can we do? Can we start a, 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 a you know, where they do the signature pages on it, you know? Or, right, right. <laughs> I mean, do what those, can uh, we do, uh, you know? Do those uh, online uh, petitions. Well, I think what would probably be more uh, effective would be to try to contact the attorney general of the state, just flood the attorney general of the state of Illinois as much as possible, flood it, flood it, flood it. And with, you know, pressure like that, I think, honestly, I believe she's being investigated already. It's just a matter of time. But you know, if you feel outraged and you want to show that you want to support some sort of change, I would probably reach out to the attorney general of the state of Illinois. All righty. All right. Well, you know, I, I think I'm going to do that and and, uh, and whatnot. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be looking for some more of your videos. I can't wait to tax season over. Come on, April 16th. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my brother, Mr. G, thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate it. All right, we got Will and we got Bird in the back. Let me bring up Will. Will, hold on, here we go. Will, you're live on that. Hi, J- JT. What's going on? Hi, JT, man. Welcome back, man. It's been a long time I haven't seen you, bro. It's been <laughs> you got me weeks. worried, man. <laughs> yeah, and we need to see you, man. Try to do some type like every Friday, man. We need to see you come in. Just come in and give us some. Um, and, and, and listen. That is why that is why I started this second channel, right? I've got a I got a second channel where I'm not gonna be talking about scammers. I'm gonna give people an opportunity to call into the show, right? They can just call into the show. I'll be doing live streams. Most likely I'll start next week doing live streams once a week. It's gonna be a call-in show. You call in, let me know what's going on. And then after tax season, I can really go hard with the scammer news. But the scammer news takes takes research and time to develop yep. the financial advice show all i got to do is sit back and listen to you guys ask questions and i can answer so that's mm-hmm. most likely what what's it going to look like moving forward i'll probably do one show a week on each channel all right does that work is that good enough? yes i uh, mean i'll be happy man <laughs> i got two two questions is that a city or town it's, it's, it's a, well, I think it's, it's a city, right? And they call it the mm-hmm. village of uh, of Dalton, right? So that's a, a, a city. Yeah. city right? Okay. If it's a city, why is the mayor's in c- control of the money, like money being spent? Usually, if they it's... They sh- balance, right? Exactly. That's mm-hmm. what I'm... It's a little bit, uh, you I know... It's, it's Based on my understanding of the situation, once again, you've got to watch the video. There's two content creators that I'm really watching that are doing an amazing job. There is Pink Book Lessons, and then there's there's Hannibal. Hannibal is is killing it on covering this story, also Mm -hmm. uh, Pink Book uh, Lessons. But based on my understanding of the situation, she is just overstepping her bounds. And with a small city like that, where she has uh, control of the police department, she's strong arming these people. Because I truly believe if we open up the charter of the village of Dalton, I'm pretty sure it's going to say that the board of trustees have rights and privileges to certain information. She's mm-hmm. just not giving it to them. And <laughs> it's at the oh. point where someone's going to have to step in to regain those checks and balances. So how many years she's left on her term? I, I, I'm not sure. I, the last time I, I, I was looking, they attempted to recall her, okay? They attempted uh-huh. to recall her. The process in which they attempted to recall her was a little messed up because I think it was their first time doing it. I think the mm-hmm. process goes, you have to do a vote to see if you can put it on the ballot to recall her. Then mm-hmm. after that's approved, you recall her. They ended up doing a situation where they had it two and one. They did the vote to see if they could recall her, and they recalled her within the same session, and it was wasn't approved. Like right? the state stepped in and said, "You did it in the wrong way." And from oh, what okay. I remember, the last time I had a conversation with someone close to the situation, they said they would attempt to recall her again, but her term is most likely going to be up, so she must not have that much more time left. But she tried to pull a trick. Once again, you got to check out our Pink Book Lessons. She's trying to pull a trick where the next person who comes in, 
the salary or whatever for the mayor is going to be greatly reduced. As long as she stays in the position, the salary stays what, what it is. It, the, this, oh. this law is only effective if she is removed in the next administration that comes in. So it kind of reduces the incentive of someone dedicating any type of full-time position of trying to be a mayor when you drop the uh, the salary so low. I'm not well, sure if that went through, but she was attempting to do that. Well, I think they could ve the city council could get together and veto whatever she put in, too. Well, I would have said that from the beginning of the story. I think that they should have been able to veto buying a one hundred and fifty thousand dollar Tahoe. They should exactly. veto all this overtime that she's given to our personal security. They should be able to veto all this stuff, the trips to Vegas. But it's still my going. God. To veto, I don't know. And then my la my last thing is just that whoever is going to be the next mayor needs to have the before he or she step in, they should have an auditor to audit everything because you know what's going to happen is she's going to do all her dirt and then whoever comes after her is going to get that all under their name so they need to make sure that yeah you won the seat mm -hmm. but you got to make sure is work towards trying to get you know try to bring a solution onto that to let the people the taxpayers knows like mm -hmm. there was how much money was actually spent what she was doing and all that put everything out to the light so whoever took over that they don't blame that person for her mess man yeah. keep it up man i like it uh, um i'll be watching you bro thank you so much let me let me touch on something i'm gonna bring up bird here in a second and then we got deaf but that, that's a great point bring it in the auditor but let me explain something from a person who who's been in this finance world for a while while an audit works in theory a lot of times it fails in practice, okay? When it comes to an audit, the entity that's being audited gets to pick who's the auditor, right? It's not as if, oh, a government agent comes in and audits your books. That's normally not the process. You hire the person or the company that audits you. Now, some will say, well, JT, what, what does that matter? Well, one of the biggest scandals and local government fraud was once again in the state of Illinois, where a woman who was the treasurer of the city got the city for millions and millions of dollars. And every year or every other year, that city was audited. I can't remember the name of the city off the top of my head, but they did an episode of American Greed on it. There's a bunch of information about this woman on YouTube, she basically took a lot of the government's money, the local government's money, and she funded this ridiculous lifestyle where she was buying a bunch of horses and she was taking the horses to competitions. It, it, it was ridiculous. The point I wanna make about auditors, that local government was audited several times. She was able to basically romance the, the auditor and really get him to not pay attention to the real numbers. So while you think, oh, bring a CPA in and audit, yeah, in theory, it sounds good, but even that system can be manipulated. So you, you you never know what you might get. All right, let me bring up Bird. Bird, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? What's going on, JT? Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir, go right ahead. Man, I'm, uh, I'm from Chicago, so. <laughs> Uh, I live, I, I'm, I'm removed about 10 years, but this is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, they should know about, well, let me tell you about the last gentleman I called. Mm -hmm. The whole world knows that whoever come in next is going to inherit a problem. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Um, but it's this guy, Keith Freeman, nobody mm -hmm. talks about. Mm -hmm. That uh, it was one of the, it was a lady that, that was at a village meeting talking okay. about how vindictive and awful he was. And see, I for one don't think that Tiffany is smart enough to be the mastermind that orchestrated all this. Okay. And they were talking about this dude, Keith Freeman, which mm -hmm. I don't think gets enough light shined on him. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully, you know, the Patty Wagon comes in and frog walk all these guys to the jail, but he got to be the mastermind behind all of this. And then I remember when uh, Tiffany was running, it was this judge, Dorothy Brown, who was mm -hmm. a Cook County Circuit Court that got caught in a scandal that was kind of campaigning for Tiffany. Mm -hmm. 
I said, they got a problem right there. They keep letting these people with a history of corruption come up and, and, and you know, and the people fall for it. And I don't understand. And I think the problem with Illinois politics mm-hmm. is identity politics. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And people need to get out of that. And um, yeah, this is just amazing to watch. Uh, I live in uh, Maryland now, but mm-hmm. this corruption is amazing. And you know, people, I understand people like, why is she in jail? I mean, it takes time to build a case. And I'm pretty sure that mm-hmm. somebody's gonna come in and stop this at some point. But I think uh, this guy Keith Freeman is not getting enough light shine on him. Okay. And that's somebody that some um that needs to be you know talked about. All right. Yeah, man. Is it, the state of Illinois. Growing up, I just remember so many governors because you know Missouri. We're right here. We're, we're next door mm-hmm. neighbors, and I just remember so many. Go- I want to say like three to four governors in a row ended oh, yeah. up going to federal uh, prison. Like it was like it was like re. Ridiculous, and it's mainly democratic, right? Mm-hmm. It's a democratic state, and when you come, when it comes down to, to our community, we focus so much on the identity politics thing instead of realizing it's more about getting your agenda through. Mm-hmm. So much in wealth building for communities can be dictated through politics, mm-hmm. certain uh, contracts. Many people get rich of government contracts that is controlled by politicians exactly. your education level based on government politicians what goes through things of that nature so if we can focus on making sure that you actually get something from the politicians that you uh put in office rather than just cheering on someone who yeah. may look like you, you we'll, we'll that probably car now. Tone talks to Vet Carnell. You know, yep. it's the you got to be engaged. Even though it sounds boring, you got to be engaged. You got to get something for your vote. Me and my boys was joking about it because in Chicago, so many aldermen get to make a lifestyle and a whole life of being an alderman. Right. And then all they got to do is just like, hey, listen, vote. Make sure you vote for so and so, or his mom ain't gonna make no patty pass for the church no more. It's like, oh lord, we gotta we gotta vote. We can't we can't go without the patty pass. I'm like, oh Jesus, man. So. You know, it's like Jacob and Esau with Jacob's. Uh, what is that? Esau saw this uh, birthright for a bowl of soup. Oh. Man, that's what a, that's what us black folks do, man. But like yeah. Minister Jap say, you can't listen to these funky. <laughs> Shouts out to Minister Jap, man. Another another Chicago in. He's he's in the it's, area. Shouts out to Minister. Hey, Jap. you put me on that, man. I, I I cracked up about that. Appreciate that, man. But that's all yeah. I gotta say. Keep on doing what you do. Hurry up with this tax season because I need you. Because I'm a truck driver. You keep me busy hours on the road, bro. Hurry Trust, trust me. Up. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working Hurry on it. Up. Thank you so much for calling in. My Hurry brother. up. All right, man. <laughs> All, right. All right. Here we go. We're going to get through these calls. We're going to wrap this up. We got Death and we got Rico. Let me bring up Death in the building. What's going on, man? You're live on the air. JT. <laughs> hey, it's been a while, man. What's going on? <laughs> you are You are it. Man, listen, as soon as this popped up, mm-hmm. I got my little, you know, indicate what, what they call that, the bell. Right. Little notification bell. Yeah, my notification. I've been waiting all day. <laughs> and my man who was just on, he said that somebody's going to step in and do something, right? hmm This is what JT does. <laughs> See, I said before, when JT gets involved, it's the beginning of the end. You might go a little bit further, but JT seen all that. Look, when she did the better have my money and then the, the, the Nino Brown. The Nino Brown. But listen, for, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, this woman is so tone deaf to her own actions. Let, let me just explain. This, this woman dressed up. As Nino Brown, if you have never watched New Jack City, then you are not, you know, you, you're not a part of the culture that I'm in. Because New Jack City was something that, as a kid that I watched almost every weekend. New Jack City is a movie about a black drug dealer who all of a sudden he, he they, they discover crack cocaine. And he uses this as an opportunity to replace the existing mafia in the city. 
which is the Italian mob. <laughs> he decides I'm going to push out the Italian mob, not to replace it with a better system, with a better crime syndicate, to actually be harder on the community than the Italian mob was. When the Italians were in office, right? The Carter, which was the project building, wasn't being terrorized. But when Nino Brown and the Cash Money Brothers got <laughs> in the office, it turned into a war zone. This woman dresses up as Nino Brown as if Nino Brown was the hero of the movie. Nino Brown's not the hero of New Jack City. The cops were not the heroes. The um, old man was. Not even the government officials were the hero. The hero of the movie was a no-named old black man. Yes, he sir. He literally had no name in the movie. He's, he's not credited with a name. He was a concerned citizen that was fed up with the corruption, that was fed up with what was going on. And when everybody else failed him, because Nino Brown was a coward, Nino Brown was not going to go to jail and take the weight. Nino Brown said, I'm going to turn state witness and get a slap on the wrist. This man took it into his own hands and took Nino Brown out of the picture. That Got old him out the man way. is the hero. She should have dressed up as the old man, not Nino. But but what's so called, the way you broke it down, that's exactly what's transpired. That's exactly who she is. And it's when I first seen it, I'm all like, oh, so you right outside of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And OK, so you right next to Missouri. Oh, yeah, it's only a matter of time before <laughs> Jay -Z, JT come down on you. You ain't getting away with this, man. Is they, you crazy? A Seven million dollar budget deficit. Seven million dollars. That's ridiculous. Come on. And it, Thanks for having me, JT. To real projects to improve the quality of life of the citizens rather than her flying around with private security she has some cancer she made the she made the, she made the police showing. her security force <laughs> jt come on bro you gotta man you gotta put an end to this man it's, it's went on long enough the, the police ain't doing nothing you are are i'm not even i'm from the west coast but <laughs> I, I'm from a very corrupt town, right? And I feel their pain. This yeah. is absurd, and somebody needs to step in. And this is why I value you so much, right? We push all these charlatans. Mm -hmm. It's nice dudes like you, like you said, Hannibal. I love you guys. Yeah. So thank you for everything you do, man. I'm oh. gonna let you continue your show, JT. Thank you, brother. You man, you're welcome every time, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we got Rico. Let me bring Rico up to the stage. What's going on, Rico? You live on the wall. Let me bring Rico up to the <laughs> stage. All right, whatever you listen to me on, you turn that down, you can listen straight to your yes, phone. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right here. Oh, you, you bounce yourself out. <laughs> come come on back. <laughs> come on back. But you know, while we wait for you to come back, I want to show the people what's going on because maybe you are unaware. So I just want to refresh your memories. <laughs> Tonight, Dalton's new mayor, Tiffany Henyard, sworn in. Dalton residents, I am reporting for duty. Henyard, now the first woman and the youngest person to ever be elected mayor of the South Suburb. Tiffany didn't just shatter that ceiling. She brought it all the way down. WGN investigates a small South Suburb with big bills and leaders with expensive taste. Last night, we showed you how some residents and elected officials claim the local mayor retaliates against people who don't support her. Well, tonight we look at a spending spree that's also causing questions and concern. Here again, investigative reporter Ben Bradley. 40 minutes south of Chicago, you'll find Dalton, Illinois. The median income is $24,000 a year. And yet the mayor collects more than 10 times that amount from various elected positions. And as we found, a paycheck isn't the only perk. In South Suburban Dalton, the economic challenges run deep. We still have areas that need trees cut, streets paved, alleys paved, sidewalks fixed. It's a lot of that going on. 
and a lot that's being spent, not on critical repairs, but on travel, meals, and more by many top village officials. It's an issue. It's been an issue for some time. We just look up and we're paying for stuff. And it just makes no sense. She's just doing what she wants to do. None of them do the things that we do here. We the only ones making sure y'all streets get paid, find ways to fix what is broken. She is Mayor Tiffany Henyard. But then they running y'all, tell y'all this look, fictitious story. Would you like to just do an interview with okay. me? Yeah, I got you. I got well, you. let's go. I mean, yeah. In addition to leaving Dalton, she also serves as supervisor of Thornton Township. You make almost $300,000 between your two elected I positions. Not. I do not. I don't know where you got that number from. We got it from her own village and township records. These are tax dollars. So is the money being spent on village credit cards. WGN investigates obtained copies of statements that reveal village officials have spent more than $24,000 at restaurants in just one year, including this Midlothian barbecue joint and a South Holland sub shop. I've seen the same thing and more. You name it, they've done it. Other questionable expenses include the streaming service Hulu, flights to Texas, Alabama, and Missouri, and hotel rooms in nearby suburbs, including Madison and Elk Grove Village, plus thousands of dollars spent at a hotel in downstate Pontiac. My take is this, if they are going to something that's gonna benefit the village, that's fine. But from my standpoint of view, these things don't benefit the village at all. And then there are the trips to Las Vegas. Mayor Henyard and other top officials traveled to Sin City in May to attend a shopping center conference. It's unclear if it helped Dalton land any deals. Don't have a clue. We're all in the dark. Not only are the residents in the dark, but the trustees are also in the dark as well. I do not handle anything as relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? Actually, yes. The credit card records do shed some light on tax dollars spent at several restaurants near the Strip, including Cafe Hollywood and Hot and Juicy Crawfish. All right, any other questions? So you're not going to answer how taxpayer dollars are being spent? That seems I just, odd. I just answered it. What do you mean? I just answered your questions. You said you wouldn't answer about Las Vegas. You asked me a question and I responded. So Let, any other questions you yes. may have? They may have signed up for a conference, but they never bring anything back. So we have no idea why they go to these trips. Remember, we mentioned Henyard was also supervisor at Thornton Township. WGN investigates obtained copies of that agency's credit card statements as well. They show township taxpayers also spent money on the Vegas trip on everything from steak dinners to hotels and $3,741 just on Henyard's round trip flight. But I shouldn't have to sit up here and break all this down. When trustees refused to pay a big block of bills this week, the mayor accused them of putting vital city services in jeopardy. We need receipts to understand What's going on? We couldn't help but notice the red hat perched in front of Mayor Henyard throughout the meeting. It's from the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, which, by the way, was apparently a stop on the Vegas trip. $303 billed to Thornton Township taxpayers. We just feel lost, and we just want the powers that be uh, to step in and say, hey, you know, something's got to give. Is, is there anybody else? I just want to be clear. Anybody else after that? Is that it? That's it? It's not unusual for the mayor of a big city like Chicago to have a security detail, but residents of South Suburban Dalton, population a little more than 20,000, are shelling out hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for police to drive and protect their mayor. And trustees say enough is enough. Mayor, mind if I ask you a couple questions about your security detail? Absolutely not. I'm asking her. Yeah, she says no. 
Dalton Mayor Tiffany Hanyard was not in a talkative mood when we caught up with her a couple weeks ago. Hanyard, who doubles as the supervisor for Thornton Township, began using Dalton cops to drive her around shortly after she was elected mayor in 2021. Dalton trustees filed a lawsuit saying she never justified the need for security and does not have the legal authority to order spending on her own. So, how much does all this cost? Well, we filed a Freedom of Information request and found that officers assigned to her detail are routinely working hundreds of hours of overtime and even accompanying the mayor when she travels out of state. One officer put in for more than 300 hours worked in a two-week payroll period, making more than $13,000 in a single paycheck. That's more than 200 hours of OT in just two weeks. I see no justification whatsoever, and more than that, it's really a detriment to the residents of Dalton. How so? Um, the residents, if we would take the same money and put it on officers patrolling the streets, then the residents will see a much better presence and public safety will be better. Oh, she loves it. She just loves it. She loves the detail. <laughs> I think um, it makes her feel as if um, she's like a superstar. Frustration growing in South Suburban Dalton after a Fox 32 investigation uncovers a registered child sex offender was recently put on the payroll. Now some residents are calling for the mayor's resignation. Dane Placco first broke the story and reports the pressure is building at Village Hall. We want transparency. About 20 Dalton residents and a couple trustees protest outside Village Hall today, furious after a Fox 32 investigation found this registered child sex offender on the public payroll. A sex offender, you don't give them carte blanche to go into different people homes. 46-year-old Lavelle Redman is close friends with Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard, who in September hired Redman as a code enforcement officer without the village board's approval. Redman served 25 years in prison for the brutal gang rape and beating of two young teenage girls in the 1990s and was arrested and charged after our first story aired for violating the reporting requirements of the sex offender registry. But Mayor Henyard says her friend deserves a second chance, infuriating a number of Dalton residents. Dalton is going to go down if these people are, they, have, they just need to get out of office as a whole. You'd like to see them? Do they need a recall on the mayor? Fox 32 has also obtained this cell phone video showing Redman interacting with the mayor and little children at a back to school event in Dalton. Notice the badge on his waist. I think it's deplorable uh, that you've hired a person that has the history that he does, and you've given him a badge and a car to roam our village. The protesters are also calling for the departure of former Cook County Circuit Court Clerk Dorothy Brown, whom Henyard hired as a village administrator, making $100,000 a year, despite numerous scandals and an ongoing federal investigation into bribery under her county tenure. Dorothy Brown needs to go back to the city of Chicago. Dorothy Brown is bringing Dorothy Brown tactics out here in the village. Nobody knows something. Don't nobody know nothing. Tiffany Henyard certainly isn't shy about attracting attention. Here she is starting a Dalton Village board meeting dressed like the Wesley Snipes character in the movie New Jack City. Later, punctuating her political points with the help of her own DJ. Every single resident, pay me what you owe me. Thank you, DJ. Only on two tonight, outrage in a different South Suburban town, Dalton. Hundreds of people lined up to pay tickets they say they never should have gotten. As CBS 2's Jermont Terry explains, they were told to show up in court today or the fines would double. Usually the trains are the loudest noise in South Suburban Dalton. Yet on Thursday, the rumble came from hundreds in long lines outside the municipal court. How long were you in that line? I can't even tell you, man. It was a long day. Hey, I sat down, I stood up. I've been in line for two hours. They are all here after getting slapped with various citations all of a sudden by the city. At first I thought it was $50. 
And then I had to put my glasses on. Elizabeth Watson quickly saw an extra zero for a total sum of $500. And if she didn't stand in this line to appear in court. After the 21st, I'll be on $1,000. Which is why hundreds packed the municipal court. That's and a lot for a senior citizen, you know, on a fixed income. And these outrageous amounts is insane. All right, people, so here we go. Last opportunity for you guys to call into the show. There is a link pinned in the chat. If you want to call into Pocket Watching with JT and let me know what you think about the super mayor or the city girl mayor, hit that link and we'll talk about it. We got Rico back. So, Rico, let me bring you up. Here we go. Rico, you're live on air. What's going on? What's going on, JT? Can you hear me a little bit better now? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you had made mention earlier about uh, Dalton's charter. Mm -hmm. And I had done a Google search for it because I wanted to download and read it for myself. Because normally, mm -hmm. you know, the charter is going to have the the requirements for the for the public officials. Mm -hmm. And I want to see what the bonding requirements you know, were. Because I'm trying to figure out why it's so hard to get her out of there. <laughs> No, seriously, because, you know, I, I, I've been watching the story for a minute mm -hmm. and I'm like, it really can't be that hard. I mean, if, she viol if she's violating the state's constitution and she's violating the charter, then they should be able to subrogate her bond and get on up out of there. But I couldn't find I couldn't find a chart. I was wondering, uh, did you ever able to get a download on it and you know, oh, I was able to get through it? During tax season, I'm, I'm way too busy. I'm way too busy. But okay. based on what I was told, they never went through a recall in that uh city before so okay. when they tried to get go through the process of doing it they had mm -hmm. to try to jam it in all at once and she did get recalled i mean people went to the polls they mm -hmm. voted to recall her and they had enough votes to recall her but because of the process the uh you know okay. the the courts did not mm -hmm. hold it because the process was rushed so obviously the people don't want it there because she got recalled is just it wasn't done the proper way because they never had to do it before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean, it's really kind of deplorable the, the things that she's uh, been accused of doing. Uh, not to say it needed here nor there, but I mean, just based on that evidence, you know, it's not looking good. <laughs> now, now, not looking good. Listen, when the fans knock on your door and they mm -hmm. start to uh, do their investigation, like at some point, this will be an episode of American Greed. At some point, this is going to be on 60 Minutes. We're going to see what the feds were doing and how they were, you know, videotaping and phone tapping and all that stuff. It's going to mm -hmm. be it's going to be a tough pill to swallow for any of her supporters, but yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. The thing about the feds, and, and, and I'm going to let you go after this, but thank you for calling in. The thing about the feds that most people do not understand, the feds do not rush in. The only time you'll see the federal government rush in is if it's some sort of like SWAT team, hostage situation. But when we're talking about white collar crime, the feds will sit back and they will watch you for days, weeks, months, years, sometime decades. And they'll just get as much evidence, as much evidence as they can, so that when they go to court, most likely you're going to take a plea deal. Because at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> they got all the time that they need because it's the federal government. It's not like your local de uh, police department, when they hear about a robbery, they, you know, all of a sudden they're in the cars and they're chasing after, they'll just watch you forever, get enough to just sink you in court. So we're probably going to see something. All right, let me bring up uh, Neo. We got Neo. What's going on? You can hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. How you doing? Um, long time pocket watcher. Um, not necessarily about um, this scammer, but... Mm -hmm. um, there's two there's two people I've been wondering about. One's pretty new. One for a long time has been the the uh, I don't know what to call it exactly. I guess the sovereign citizen space. Uh huh. Um, one is Yusuf L. Have Have you heard of Yusuf L? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I have not. Okay, Yusuf. Does he L. have like a YouTube channel or something? 
Yes, he does. It's high frequency radio. Okay, and, and what what does he teach? I mean, I, I want to hear it, but I got to move on to someone else on topic. But I want to hear it. What, what does he teach? He teaches um, secured party creditor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the sovereign citizen slash Morris National. Uh, you can pay your debts with government credits, uh, government secret trust accounts, and stuff like that. I don't necessarily know. Um, I, I I I just see that he's like he has a lot of older videos, but I seen that he's very confrontational, and I think he actually did a video with Art Artie the. Uh, the oh Lori yeah, that Art, Artie's corporate fiction. Yeah yeah yeah, a friend of the channel, friend of the channel. Definitely, Artie's corporate definitely. fiction. He's and then an and then the other guy host, and he does a lot of reaction videos to Sovereign Citizens, Morris Nationals. Uh, First Amendment auditors and stuff like that. He, he's an attorney out of the East Coast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He did a video with him, I believe. Um, and he was in his comments. So it was interesting seeing that exchange. And then um, Who's the other guy? Joe Brandon Williams. Joe Brandon, Brandon Williams. Williams. That sounds like a, a senator's name. Who's that? What does he do? Um, He he talks about how to 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 kill contracts oh slow down slow down man come on man this is youtube man you're trying to get me you're trying to get me kicked out of here he, he talks about trying to delete who what's going on to to kill like your contracts connecting you to the irs well, hold on. Wait, on, on. why are you using that term when you're talking about the irs just say to, this trigger words in this algorithm buddy Let, let's 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 keep it keep you use your language very selectively He's talking about ways that you can get rid of contracts with the IRS. Yeah. What contract do, do you have with the IRS? Um, I I don't remember exactly. I, I haven't necessarily gone through. There is no, <laughs> there's no. I'm I'm unaware of contracts people have with the IRS unless. You're speaking about payment arrangements that I have clients and there's many people who owe the IRS money and you enter into a payment arrangement with the IRS. I guess maybe in some twisted way you can think of that as a contract. But yeah, th these guys don't know what they're talking about. But shoot me an email. Go to uh, pocketwatcherjt at gmail.com. Send me links to their content. When I have time, I'll check them out. Thanks for uh, calling in. We got KK Days in the building. Let me bring up KK Days. What's going on? Hey, JT, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> hey, it's like my second time. I think my third. Oh, uh, yeah. I just want to add this one thing to it. Mm -hmm. She's definitely trifling. Um, but as a black woman, to hear a woman get up on, and my niece was cracking up. My niece is like 10. She's like, oh, my God, auntie. I said, did she just play B better have my money at a business meeting? Right. I said, this is ratchet. And my, my niece, I was popped open. Did she just play B better have, my, better have my money at a business meeting? And I was so glad in real time. I said, listen, no matter how much you see us have fun at a barbecue, you don't see me conduct business. When I conduct business, we don't do that at all. And my she's like, oh my god, I never seen you like this. And I'm like, yeah, that's embarrassing. I'm a black woman. That is embarrassing. Yeah. I'm just so disgusted. Mm -hmm. Like magic. What about that? Is magic? That's tragic. Like, uh, ew. Yeah. I mean, she's typing. Lowers the standards for what you would think a black politician should do. So now, yeah. because she's done that. You're going to see other people think that that is okay behavior okay. in a situation that there should be. Listen, I when, when, when I'm not the pocket watcher, when I'm relaxed in my own situation with my friends and my family, I'm a cut up. I'm going to do the things that we do in our community. But if you do not hold yourself yes. to a higher level of professionalism in the situations that matter in life, then what you're saying is, well, that's okay for a Negro. A Negro can do that. You won't, you, you can't see that in other communities, but that's the best you can get out of a Negro, so it's okay. Exactly. That was so embarrassing and just disrespectful. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, embarrassing. Yeah. Subpar. 
And she's embezzling money. All right, I'm done. Allegedly. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Any uh, any other uh, statements you want to make? No, that just that just made me the most mad. I'm not gonna lie. I know, the money part is wrong. But that coming to the meeting part. Hide your BS a little better if you're if that's how you're gonna move. I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. Hide it better to come do and be do doing people if wrong. If you're gonna be corrupt, do a better yeah. job. Of being corrupt. Be crazy with it. Be better have my money. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. Thanks for calling in. I gotta go to the next caller. I appreciate it. All right, we got Cash Man in the building. Cash Man, what's going on? Hey, JT, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. What's up? No, nah, um, so one of the most recent things I've kind of heard kind of going on with this saga with this mayor, and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, mm -hmm. is apparently the uh, the town has not been paying their bills, referenced the, um, all of the vehicles. Right. And so now apparently the, the bank that has the loan now wants to repossess right. about 20 vehicles to include police cars. So... <laughs> I, I I don't know how you have a security detail with police cars that you ain't paying on, but you know. And apparently, and payments she payments paid were approved. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a Tahoe for for basically a you know a SUV. So she pays for that in cash, allegedly, based on what information that I have. But the cop cars, which apparently have car, uh, car notes, right? They're not paying the notes for the cop cars. And next right. thing you know, you might see the repo man back up to the cop cars and pull, yes. <laughs> and pull them off. Yes. Apparently, they, the bank reportedly says that they're owed in the ballpark of north of 70000 uh, How many cars? Like this, I got to remember, we're not talking about New York or Maine. No, it's a, it's a little town. Like I said, I mean, I currently live in Chicago now, but it's a little... <laughs> It's a little town outside of the city. Yeah, it's, like how many how many police cars do they have? Because I know little, uh, you know, uh, suburbs in the city of St. Louis that might have like three or four cop cars, right? It's not they don't I mean, have a lot. I would guess maybe a, a dozen or so. Right, you know, and that's about seventy thousand dollars back. Yes. Whew. I don't know how they're gonna make that up. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no clue, JC. But I, I, I just, I, I, I hate it when people represent us in, in, in such a manner, and that's what the the world sees. Yeah, yeah. That that's the representation that we get. There's so many other people in positions all across the country that are doing things the right way, but they're not going to get the press. They're not going to get the clicks and the views because. We live in a world and a society that we do not reward doing the right thing, right? Because it's expected. Oh, well, that man goes to work. He takes care of his family. He does the right thing. That's what he's supposed to do. And because that's what he's supposed to do, we don't acknowledge it. As soon as a clown does something that they're not supposed to do, obviously that gets the clicks and the views. But it's the representation that's the problem. When the clicks and the views are always centered around buffoonery, we start to take on the stereotype as if we are buffoonery. Yeah, that's why. Absolutely. That's why I started this show. Part of the reason is I, I want to be able to show there is a large class of black professionals in the financial space that look at the buffoons of all these finance influencers, the ones that's going to hip you to the game, the ones that's going to drop some gems and show you how to run the play. We laugh at those guys. They don't represent us, the people who actually are professionals in the field. It's just that most of my contemporaries, they work for these big firms and there's compliance offices where they have to get approved for every tweet that they make and every Instagram post and they 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 can't have their own YouTube channel like this and talk recklessly like I talk because I own my own firm. So I have to stand up for all of the black CPAs, for all of the black CFPs, for all of the black business attorneys who look at that buffoonery and say, that's not us. That's not what we represent. That's not what we should be doing to try to 
close the wealth gap and, and build generational wealth. Like none of those clowns represent us. So we the, have to show that not nah, we don't the crazy do part. The crazy part, JT. I mean, what I've learned in the past couple of years about just about building wealth is 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 been amazing. Learning about how different retirement accounts work. You know, mm -hmm. the amount of information I learned from yourself, mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey, mm -hmm. uh, the lead attorney, uh, the money guys. Yeah. Just just putting all that. That it's 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 it's, it's been a hell of an education. And, and it's um, not sexy though, too, right? The no, stuff that we're teaching is not sexy, but it's effective. It works. Dollar cost averaging into an, a, re, a retirement account, making sure that you have a budget, paying down your debt. These things are not sexy, but they work. If you're looking to get rich quick, I'm telling you, you're gonna get scammed. And it kind of reminds me of a, a, a comment I heard a, a guy tell Dave Ramsey show a while back where mm -hmm. the guy was basically calling Dave Ramsey an idiot of basically claiming, oh, you, you know, billionaires are saying this, billionaires are saying that. And it basically what Dave Ramsey says, I'm not trying to teach you how to be a billionaire. I'm just trying to teach you how to become a millionaire. And why are we worried about being a billionaire if you're not even a millionaire? People, people are so clown. But I, I'm going to let you go. I got to go to the next call. But that's such a great point. One time I was working out with a trainer, like a trainer came in to this group session. And this guy is like one of the elite of the elite when it comes to like bodybuilding and whatnot. I mean, the guy's elite. And like in between one of the workouts, he grabbed like a candy bar or something and he was eating the candy bar. And someone, not me, someone came up to him and was like, oh, okay. So like Reese's Pieces. So Reese's Pieces is, is cool. And he looked at the guy and was like, you cannot try to emulate what I do. This is a man that has a body type that only like a fraction of the of a, of a percentage of the world can achieve. And he works out like six to eight hours almost every day. Him eating that candy bar in a random situation is not your uh, out of shape butt eating Reese's Pieces all day long. It's a... You cannot judge yourself based off what the 1% of the 1% of the 1% can do from time to time. You need to actually you know, evaluate yourself based on a scale that makes sense to you. So if you think, oh, I'm going to do what billionaires do, it's probably not going to work out for you. All right, let me bring up, we got we got Darren in the building, Darren the Sigma in the building. What's going on, Bob? Hey, go mom to the good brothers, man. <laughs> Listen, um, first of all, always good to speak to you. It's a pleasure. You're a forward mentor that one day I love to connect with. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry if you guys hear the background noise. I'm at the gym. You're talking about being at the gym. I'm at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so I just hopped in to say, for the past three months, mm -hmm. this story has been everywhere, right? And it's just the gall that she has mm -hmm. to not feel guilty, right? You're sitting there representing not only your township, we represent people of color mm -hmm. that want those positions. You represent right. people that have hopes and dreams, but she she doesn't care. For her, it's is the overall like I made it, so I'm good. I don't right. care about anybody else. It's all about me. So the day people start understanding that it's never just about them, maybe we have a chance as a people to win, right? Maybe right. we have it as a as a chance to grow and thrive. But I, I don't know what to say. Like I'm seeing when it first happened, mm -hmm. it was the black YouTubers are covering it. It was very small. If you didn't, if you didn't follow you or certain other other YouTubers, you would not know about the story. But it has grown so much that she has big now. Yeah. internationally. I have friends in France call me say, "Have you heard about this video?" Yeah, I saw and like the New York Post, like big outlets are covering this story. But that's normally how most stories go, right? Mm -hmm. They start small and local, and then they start to blow up. The thing that I'm seeing, and I think you, you're seeing it as well, this seems to be a woman who has no shame, right? Shame is not a bad thing all the time. Shame will keep you in check. Shame will keep you from doing something out of character because you don't want to have to face your family and your friends and be embarrassed. This woman seems to have no shame. 
She can do whatever she wants to do, act how she wants to act, and thinks like, who's going to check me? It's like, woman, you have a legacy, regardless of where you are in life. If you're some famous person or you're just a local person doing whatever you, you do in your life, you're going to be remembered by the impact that you have on other people. Mm -hmm. What impact is she going to have with other people if she sees herself as some sort of queen a tyrant like she literally created a stage during these these uh council meetings where she's up top and all the trustees are below her i was told that before they were all on the same stage she literally put them beneath her people's actions show you how they think her mm -hmm. actions tell me she's a woman that has most likely no shame she has an unrealistic confidence in herself and what she's doing. And she probably does not take uh, counsel very well because I would love to believe that there's people who care about her who are telling her this don't look good. But yeah, it, it seems as if she's ignoring that. It got to the point that I believe it was Spencer. Spencer saw that she has a brother or a cousin that owns a nightclub mm -hmm. in Chicago. And she forced a small, a local small business in her town that is driving a thousand plus people to do a car show in the town, bringing back money to the town. But she refused a permit just so that he can have it at her cousin's or brother's space. <laughs> so, so now not only are you hurting the people that are trying to bring money to the town that can pay you your money that you're asking for, but she's taking away entertainment for a small town that doesn't have one. There's a story about an ice rink that was supposed to be built, and she didn't, she didn't pay the company. Company she brought in another company that she still didn't pay. <laughs> like, so what is it? How how many loopholes can you jump until you realize I'm done? And it seems that like being a mayor, you should understand there's a system called checks and balances. Yeah, but it's <laughs> ne never underestimate a narcissist's ability to be blind to their own reality. When you're when you're a full-fledged narcissist, when you're someone who only is thinking about yourself and the power that you can gain and your control over situations, if you think that she actually sees herself in the mirror when she looks, she doesn't. She sees something that she's projecting herself to be, and that is what's going to be the downfall. That ego thing, man. Being self-aware is almost like a superpower nowadays. Most people are not self-aware, meaning most people do not live in the reality of their lives. That's why people overspend. That's why people put a lot of stuff on their credit cards. They get in debt. They have a fancy looking car outside, but they're probably a few payments behind on their rent. That's a person who's not facing the reality of their situation. Being self-aware is a superpower. Being able to understand your ability, what you can and cannot do, strive to improve yourself, but do not spend money as if you're already there. That's why the city is probably in the $7 million deficit that they're currently in. And I really hope it seemed like when she was elected, that city had a chance to thrive. When she first started, <laughs> let's, let's, let's had not a just, chance. just throw the city all the way. The, the city will rebound. I, I, no, I'm, of course, of course. I Any, believe the city will rebound from this. You're you're an but economist, so you understand how it goes ups and down. You're fine. Yeah, <laughs> the reputation fine. <laughs> though is going to stay with them for a while. Correct. The reputation is going to stay with them. Yeah. And I, I think I think it's it's time for us as people to understand that if you have a position a position of leadership, it's no longer about yourself. And I hope this serves as a wake-up call for anybody that decides to run for run for me a councilman, um, Auburn, whatever position that you want to represent, mm -hmm. you have to understand so much for yourself. Yes, the money might be great, there's opportunity to make money everywhere. I file taxes for people and I I could, I could charge one thousand dollars. <laughs> I charge one fifty. And that's just me just filling out paperwork. And people right. look at us, they're like, hey, why are you charging so much? I'm like, I could charge you more, but I respect what you've earned and what you've been doing, so I'm not going to take your money from you because I'm in a position to help you. Right. And that's how it is, man. Again, JT, thank you so much for having me.
And every single time I see you online, brother, I just I just tell my head, that's a good bro. Go mob. <laughs> Go mob, man. Thank you so much, man. You have a good one, man. You too. All right. All right. We got two more calls. We're gonna wrap this thing up. We got Milton and we got PPP loan. So let me bring up Milton. Milton, you're live on the air. What's going on? Yeah, how you doing, brother? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. All right. Uh well, let me say this. I think Tiffany Henner being that that she uh they wanted her out. Mm -hmm. I think she has the mentality of saying, like, you know what, if I can't have it, I'm gonna just destroy it. I think that's her personality. Uh okay. that's my phrase she had towards the city. Mm -hmm. Also, I have a question. In your opinion, because you know, uh, why is it, especially in the so-called black community, mm -hmm. that all this scamming is so rampant? I mean, it's like a, it's like you can't you can slip and fall on a scammer. <laughs> what why you think that is? I, I I'm curious to know. Well, let, let me be clear. Scamming goes on in every community. Okay. Scamming goes on in every community. I understand it goes on that. In the Jewish community, it goes on in the Asian community, white community, Irish community. The thing that is special about the black community mm -hmm. is that in our journey in America, we have become a community that has just this uncanny ability of our communication and to bring things in the pop culture, right? Uh, you know, every community have drug dealers, mm -hmm. but you see rap and hip hop music popularize selling drugs. It's not as if it's like a, a, a big difference between drug dealing and other communities, but our pop stars and our, you know, uh, athletes and entertainers and whatnot, they make that culture seem cool. So the reason why in the black community scamming is just so popular is that we make almost any deviant behavior seem cool and we make it mainstream. We put it in different elements of our culture, our music, our movies, stuff like that. And it makes it it makes it more than what it is. Right. It mm -hmm. seems as if it's overrepresented in our culture because our culture has this love affair with making that type of stuff seem cool. It's like Italians and the mafia. Mm -hmm. Every every Italian is not in the mafia, right? <laughs> of but course, of course. with Hollywood really making it look bigger than what it is with movies like The Godfather and all these other movies, it gives the perception as if, oh, he's an Italian, he may know someone who's in the mob, when most likely they probably don't. It's the same thing in our community. It's as if mm -hmm. scamming and selling drugs because it's popular within a certain segment of the community that gets highlighted. It's it's overrepresented. That's what it is. It's not like it's more than any other community. It's just overrepresented. That's like you know Asians are good in math. Listen, I'm really good in math. I got better <laughs> math uh, uh, grades than all the Asian kids in my class growing up. But all because right. that is what's projected as that's what they do, it's over uh, represented. That's all. Oh, okay. All right. I understand that. Also, I got I got another question for you. One more question. Mm -hmm. I, I've i been hearing a lot about the generational wealth, which I, my opinion, I mean, I, I got no opinion, but mm -hmm. you, in your field, in your expertise, mm -hmm. what you, I mean, what type of advice can you, I mean, what can we do as a people to make sure that we're financially stable, where we can leave something on to our kids. I'm not looking for, I'm not saying like generation, but you know, right. Like leak transfer over to them. Something that's not debt or right. a problem. You know, the first thing you have to do is you have to have financial discipline. I mm -hmm. think one of the biggest problems is, and I say this from time to time, the average person's conception of what being wealthy is, is like, a 15 year old boy who's addicted to porn, who does mm. not have a healthy relationship with what intimacy is, right? That okay. 15 year old boy who's who's addicted to porn thinks that intimacy is all about money shots and ag being aggressive, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they don't know what real intimacy is. Our culture has an unhealthy relationship with what wealth is. They think wealth is flying around on a private jet. Wealth is making it rain in the club. 
Wealth is wearing the most expensive clothes known to man. $10,000 t-shirts, $20,000 shoes. That's mm. not real wealth. That is a cartoon version of what wealth really is. Wealth is having financial stability in your life, being able to live underneath your means. Meaning if you make $50,000 a year, you live off of around 45,000 or whatever a year where you're able to meet all of your financial obligations. You're able to save, invest, and pay out down debt. Generational wealth simply means, in, in, in my purview as a financial planner, it means that the next generation starts out in a better position than the previous one. Mm -hmm. So if your great-grandfather came up from the South, who used to be a sharecropper, then mm -hmm. your grandfather, after they moved to the North, was able to at least go to school. And then your father went to college. See, that's slowly but progressively being better and better and having more resources than the previous generation. What we see a lot is a cycle of poverty. We mm. have generation after generation starting at the same place. You can go to almost any uh, project and you okay. may find three generations who grew up in that project, section yeah. eight houses. Even more than that, Grandma, sometimes. the mom, and the daughter all mm -hmm. live in Section 8 housing. Mm -hmm. Same area. You'll never have generational wealth if they continue to start at the same place that the previous generation started. It takes mm -hmm. financial discipline. Okay. Well, hey, man, you answered my question, man. I appreciate that. Also, I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. I'm in the, uh, the West. I mean, I'm in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, not just Dalton, a lot of those suburb cities, Harvey, a lot of those cities are having problem, problems. Mm -hmm. I, you know, of course, Tiffany Henry is like the main purview. Right. Matter of fact, Harvey uh, uh, may have just got arrested, I believe. So it's crazy. But hey, man, JT, I thank you, man. Uh, hey, man, enjoy the rest of your, your night, man. Appreciate it. Hey, man, appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Let me bring up PPP. I can't, I can't bring up PPP loan because your device is not working. Your device is not working. So let me go Let me go to the chat real quick. I want to give a shout out to our soul super chat. And listen, once again, let me, let me make this extremely clear. Do not super chat me thinking that, hey, let me help JT out so JT can make his mortgage payment or that JT can, <laughs> can make his car note. One, I don't have a car note. My, my, my cars are paid in cash. I am not a full-time YouTuber. If you have student loan debt, if you have credit card debt, do not super chat me. Pay off your debt, all right? Let's, let's make that clear. But we got Dr. Nikita Cloud in the building. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate the uh, super chat. She was giving a shout out to Steve, Edward Steve. He was the former uh, Dalton trustee who I interviewed earlier in the show. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, listen, we got we got a friend of the show in the back. Listen, I want to bring you up, but I gotta go to. I I, I gotta wrap it up. I, I I gotta wrap it up. So if you got a quick thing that you want to say, let me bring you up, real quick. Here we go. What's going on, man? <laughs> G'day, mate. I've got nothing really to say, but I was driving home and I saw you pop up on my phone, and I thought I'd listen to you, but I um, only got the tail bit of your show, and I just wanted to say good day. But mm -hmm. there is what you talk about. Um, I've just I did a live this morning, and mm -hmm. it was all about the Indian community. And I was watching a Zoom meeting, and there's a Ponzi scheme at the moment that's starting to get traction. And all of a sudden, they went from 200 people in a Zoom meeting to about 950. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh no, the Indian community has got hold of this stupid scam. Mm -hmm. And I I did a whole video this morning on how can we warn a nation who doesn't want to listen. And, you know, it's just incredible. But, you know, it's like fanning a fire and all of a sudden an ember gets some wind and they all of a sudden think that, that you know, and it's just it heartbreak, it's heartbreaking, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I did enjoy the part about um, the Italians because that's exactly what I think, mate. <laughs> Every Italian's part of the mafia. 
<laughs> but that's all. I just I don't want you to go on for ages, mate. But I just wanted to drop in and say good day. You're doing good. Hey, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you coming up. You know, you're always welcome here with Pocket Watching with JT. So, all right, people, listen, we're going to wrap this thing up. As I said before, I just want to remind you guys, I do have a new channel. I started a new channel because I do want to do straight call-in shows where I'm simply giving people financial tips to help your everyday life. The main channel, we're not going anywhere. We're going to continue to make the same type of content that we do over here. I will be reacting to scammer news and bad financial advice. We're still going to do that here. But on the new channel, weekly, probably start next week, weekly, I will be doing a live stream going about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, giving you guys an opportunity to call in, let me know what's going on in your financial life. I will give you recommendations to improve the situation, and we'll have some fun. All right, so that's what we're going to do. The Pocket Watcher is out. I Hopefully, hopefully I will be back next week. I will definitely be back next week on this new channel. Other than that, the Pocket Watcher is out. Y'all have a great night. Hey, Pocket Watchers, are you looking for real financial advice? Thornton Advisor Group is here to help. Jason Thornton, certified financial planner, specializes in tax and wealth planning. Are you living paycheck to paycheck with no retirement plan? Do you need help with the IRS? Book your consultation with Thornton Advisor Group to get a financial plan, budgeting, savings, debt management, tax planning, investing, and retirement, even IRS debt settlements. Stop trying to run the play. Get the advice you need to live your best life from a certified financial planner. Book your consultation appointment today. Go to www.thorntonadvisor.com. Hi, I'm Mike Evans with More Money. Tell me, what do you know about More Money? Brother, all I know is I was there last night getting my taxes done, and today, there's more money all the way. You know what I'm saying? And how about you? In here yesterday, back today to get my check. This more money stuff is real. I'm more money for life. I had a slow money? Well, come to more money, because we about that. More money taxes, and once again, it's on, and I got the hookup. <laughs> more money taxes. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. At Mo Money Taxes, you're more than just another number. This year, we're offering our 30-second refunds to go along with our next day refunds. Come down and see us, and you'll be glad that you did. Continuing saga of Mo Money Taxes. Norfolk Police are investigating the tax preparer, and they have alerted the IRS about customers' complaints. Where's my check? That's the question all of these people want answered. The IRS is basically verifying to us that their, our money is here in their bank account. Friday, crowds gathered at Mo Money Taxes in Norfolk. On Granby Street, owner Mario Brady told us he printed 50 checks and 30 did not clear. The banks have refused to cash their checks saying that there is fake. I mean, that is unacceptable. Federal agents raided the headquarters of Mo Money Taxes in Tennessee this morning. You may remember, tell on your side, I traveled to Memphis for local Mo Money customers who claimed they didn't receive their refund. We continue to follow another developing story. New tonight, tensions continue to run high as customers wait for their tax returns that they say were not getting from Mo Money taxes. You can see the level of anger just a few hours ago at this Norfolk location off Brambleton. Angry customers who say they were promised refund checks and didn't get them broke windows and police were called to break up the angry crowd. That's just ridiculous. Marcus Eves, a former customer who says he filed his taxes with Mo Money in 2007, is worried about what we recently uncovered behind this Mo Money Tax Services location on Elvis Presley. This is wrong for, you know, files to be out here. This is people's personal information that anybody could have come by and gotten. Investigators are now looking into the discovery of thousands of documents thrown into three dumpsters behind the facility. Shortly after authorities arrived on scene and put up crime scene tape, so did Marky Granberry with Mo Money Taxes. Normally, uh, we would have all files shredded uh, and, and uh, shredded or whatever, but this we don't throw files in the garbage can. I asked him what happened and why the documents were not shredded. Our lease was up on this operation, so I assume the landlord went inside of the location and for whatever reason he decided to throw the files in a dumpster.